Hello. I'm actually super surprised there's that many people here. I'm honored, and I'm sure my guests are as well. Uh, my name is Michal Buika. I'm working for Boombit, if anybody knows this company. And uh, we, are, we gathered here so we could explore how to network properly. Networking is uh, like the cornerstone of business development. And these guys are notorious networkers. Nobody knows where they work. Everybody knows who they are. <laughs> so, uh, Rebecca in the middle? Yeah. That's Will. Hi. And that's Vlad. And that's all you need to know <laughs> about them. I'm sure you've met them in some parties. And if you didn't, you're doing it wrong. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, uh, I'll just sit down. Ooh, and can, ev can everybody see us? Okay. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using my phone because my memory is really bad because of the networking. And uh, OK. Hi. Uh, so uh, lady and gentlemen, uh, can you please uh, tell us, you're going to like a lot of events. And there are about 150 events in the world every year. So how do you actually pick the events that you go to? And how do you make it? Uh, worth your while. And before you say anything, I would just like you to play Jenga while giving the answers. Oh, while giving the answers. Yeah. And uh, the, th the thing is, um, it's not about who wins the Jenga uh, thingy. It's about how theatrical you will be in your performance. Because you will be judged by this audience, by the way. I will be asking you to, to cheer for, the, for everybody here. Because there's, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser with like four competitions we have. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> We're here, Michal. Everyone's a winner. Uh, and for, for, for losing, there will be penalties. If it, if it, yeah, if it falls, do we just move on to the next question? Yeah. Or do we, are we punished? Well, the, the loser <laughs> will have to set up the next I'll let, set. I'll, I'll, I'll let the audience decide. Okay, okay. Uh, Rebecca, can you start? Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's what my, my job that I had before was... Uh, I will oh, take I this. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Yeah. Okay, so I was um, head of Berlin Baltic Nordic before, connecting the games industry from Berlin with the Baltic Sea, Nordic countries, Eastern Europe and beyond. And for me, it was never really um, a matter of how do I pick it in terms of my agenda. For me, everyone, like meeting everyone was, a, was great, you know, building up the network, expanding it constantly. That's what it was all about. And now that uh, I'm a service provider, I'm with Lutz right now, so I have to actually check which conferences have... Uh, which attendees, and you always find that on, on the website for the conference, you check it up, you have a meeting system, um, and then you try to contact them up front and, and schedule meetings uh, during the day. And Yeah, so I just look for the relevant people at conferences right now for my service. But I'm always happy to meet everyone, and it uh, doesn't really work that way. You're always going to find other people that are, that are going to be valuable at some point in your career, probably. Oh, we're going to explore that later. Vlad, yeah. can you... Can you please continue? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Starting with Jenga. Yeah, all right, let's go. Um, <laughs> You're not saying... You have to answer at the same oh time. Oh, God, I have to answer at the same oh, time oh. while I'm miserably failing. So my name is Vlad Miku. I'm um, a serial networker in the sense that I um, go to an average of about 40 events a year. I don't know why anymore, but I just, I just <laughs> got used to it. Has anyone seen that movie with uh, George Clooney called Up in the Air? Yeah. Raise your hands. Yeah, so that's my life. Um, <laughs> there's this really cool speech that you can find on YouTube about it as well, uh, about how he lives out of a backpack. But um, I've been in the in industry for, um, <laughs> he's just playing, uh, <laughs> for 13 years now. I would say that um, I started out as an, in, uh, as an industry journalist, which of course got me a lot of exclusive access Jenga. to um, people. Oh God, oh, we gotta keep playing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ongoing. So it's like many it's things. It's more important than your answer. So, so, yeah. many, <laughs> so many things happening at the same time. So um, I uh, started as an industry journalist, um, pretty much like bluffed my way into this business and uh, wrote, about uh, game developers, and that it got me access to a lot of like high-level people, right? Because everyone likes attention and to be interviewed with. And because I went to a lot of international events, I actually became very rare and special for the Dutch um, journalistic, like like Dutch media outlets, because I would go to places where they wouldn't 
be able to go or they didn't have budget to go. I, I, I self-funded it. So a lot of the money that I saved up as a student went to paying for these trips. And that then snowballed into me knowing more people, getting into game development myself, being invited as a speaker, and that's great because suddenly, you know, my hotels were covered, my flights were covered, and that kind of snowballed. So for the last couple of years, I've been a... Seriously? Who's doing that? Um, I'm trying to focus here. So I, I've been consulting small to mid-sized game developers on business development, um, which is why I've also called myself the Mary Poppins of the game industry on, on, on LinkedIn, which... Um, it might sound really cool, but it, it, it's also because there's some babysitting and, and, and uh, dancing and singing involved, and you hope that you come in, you do your thing, and you leave. I always try to make myself expendable and, and unnecessary. Um, so I work with small and mid-sized game developers who usually have a team member that picks up all the business stuff, but they usually like one of the programmers or artists. So um, this is such a wreck of a Yenga yeah. already. Um, no, don't push my, why are you pushing my arm? Um, here we go. Well, uh, <laughs> all right. So, <coughs> so I work with a lot of different clients, mostly in the developers, the kind that uh, have someone from the team that has no business background whatsoever s assign themselves to go into these events pitching to publishers, talking to platform holders and whatnot. So I try to facilitate that. Now, um, that has given me a diverse group of clients. Uh, one of them I'm wearing the t-shirt of, which is Nutaku, which is doing adult games. So they're publishing and distributing that. Um, you can ask me questions about that later. Um, and, in, and yeah, it gets you to meet a lot of interesting people, which I'm happy to also end up calling my friends, like this lovely panel here. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, the best summary. Yeah, I've done pretty much everything except art and programming in this business. So uh, that's your turn to pick the Again? Oh well, God. we'll come explain how he picks the events he goes to. Uh, I work for a company where I have a certain amount. I, I have a kind of baseline that I need to meet. So it has to be relevant to the business that I'm doing in order to, to justify the expense of going. Um, so, and, I, and as a PR person, I'm often looking for a new business. That said, I very much agree with the fact that anyone that you meet can be useful at some point in your career, um, or could just be, a, a, you know, could be useful to introduce to someone else. Um, it could put you in fun social scenarios. So, you know, if, if I could, I would go to absolutely every single one. Uh, otherwise, I'd just go to the ones that are, that are gonna be most relevant to my business concerns. Uh, this is a really boring answer. <laughs> well, well, definitely well put. Okay, so let's, let's, well we, we can't all just like roll around the world and you know uh, have a great time. Although we we invariably do each of us, I think. Yes, but okay. So yeah. as as, a, as an extension of this question, since we still have the Jenga standing, uh, is there an event that you remember particularly well, and which event was that, and why do you remember it particularly well? Uh, let's start with Vlad this time. So where's the one that we? we first met each other. Do you guys remember? We met here, two years ago. Two years ago, I met you Dragons, in, a right? ca in a cab. I met you in a, in a taxi in Helsinki while you were doing a Finnish developer impersonation. Oh, yes, 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 very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't we meet here too? We met here. We, we met here, so <laughs> we Digital here Dragons. We, we have a habit of bumping into each other yeah. in the airport. Can yeah, you exactly continue with the bricks? So, so Digital Dragons for me has become actually one of my favorite shows in the year, not just because of how it's organized, but God, um, yeah, this is going on YouTube, so I need to not swear, because um, then it gets demonetized. But um, so don't sing any songs, because we'll get copyright claimed. But um, <laughs> Digital Dragons actually has become one of my favorite shows, not just because of how it's organized and this lovely new conference center definitely helps. Um, but that's fine. Um, but uh, also because the Polish game development scene has become one of my favorite scenes. Uh, communities, I would say, next to the Finnish community, because of how um, like how tight the community is, how transparent you guys are. When someone loses, everybody loses. When someone wins, everybody wins. And the Polish parties have been some of the best parties, I would say, that have shown how tight you guys are together. And and it's I'm I'm very proud to see and say that, uh, for example, at PAX West in Seattle in September, right after Gamescom, if you're not already wasted enough from Gamescom to go there um, has become the most well, highly rated party at that event. And we're talking about the US, right? We're talking about the headquarter, like pretty much the city that harbors Epic, Valve, 
Microsoft, and then the Pola, Polish just dominated the party scene. So I guess that's enough said. Otherwise, I have to agree with Will. I've become a lot more selective because there's just so many events happening right now that you just got to count your your opportunities. Now, I have the ability of going to so many events because that's what I do. Now, if you're a company that, that has a limited budget and limited time, and you're actually also working on a project while you're the guy responsible for networking, <laughs> then, time. yeah, that's you've mm -hmm. got to be very selective. But I'm glad you guys are here. So let's make the most of it, right? Yeah. So, Rebecca, while well, you're at the yeah. Jenga right now. Oh! oh. So Ooh, yeah, we have, made it. have fun, have fun talking <laughs> and rebuilding at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So Re Rebecca, which which one do you remember uh, best? Um, I guess for me it's it's two. One of them is Casual Connect because it was my first conference in this industry and I had no, oh. no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was there, I entered the venue and I looked at all these people. I had no idea who they are and what are they doing with the laptops and why are they looking at them and why are they talking to each other. It was all just very confusing. And I remember just taking out my phone and walking around the venue and trying to act really busy with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt so awkward. Like a lot of, just lot of that. Right? <laughs> so busy. Um, and then I was introduced to at an evening event. It's always evening events. I was introduced to the, the guru of the German games industry, Stefan Reichert. And I was like, oh, holy shit. If I tell that guy that I have no idea who he is and what these people are doing here, then he's never going to talk to me again. I did it anyways, of course, because you have no choice. You have to start at some point. And uh, he sat me down like the godfather somewhere on the couch and had everyone coming over to us and started, you know, introducing me to all the people that are important to this industry and how they are connected and where they come from. So that was the first conference that I realized games industry and games people are amazing and really welcoming. So I guess that was a really important one for me. And then Nordic Game right afterwards because it has an amazing vibe and you meet insanely great people there that have been really, really helpful and open and helping me in my career, you know. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Well, I think it would be very difficult to pick one single event. I think, That's I think. Well. Oh, so, so, so British of you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. To ever the diplomat, although we're not too good at that at the moment right now, apparently. Um, uh, I, yeah, it would be difficult to pick one. I think, I think some people, if you are, I find if you are some people, a standout event for them, they tend to talk about one thing happening at the event, like, oh, it was yeah. when, it was the E3 when the, the Xbox One was right. announced and, or something like that. For me, it tends to be about the social occasions and the enjoyment of seeing everybody. Um, and and, for the, and I, I'll agree with Vlad strongly that I, uh, I like the Polish scene a lot. Everyone's very friendly. It's on the rise, which is good because people are welcoming. There's no sense of um, uh, uh, snobbery at all or anything like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <laughs> 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 that was... Oh, smooth. Uh, okay. Since you mentioned Polish hospitality, yes, uh, we are about to feed you some Polish pierogies right now. Great. With uh, Boombit's hot sauces. Boombit's hot sauces. Yeah. We have a friend at our company that, that prepares hot sauces as a hobby. And I know some of you tasted them. Some of you didn't. I but I really been. want to make it really hard for you to answer my next question. If that's on. okay, yeah. Can we please have the pierogies? I'm gonna help you. I could, I could also use a bucket just in case, but that's a different story. Because he didn't, he didn't oh. bring, he didn't bring any. Like he's doing the Thank whole you. like, like hot they stuff thing, lit. but yeah. hot, hot, hot. What was the the, the 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 YouTube show again? But he didn't bring any milk or Pepto Bismol. We do have great. milk. You, you do, do have, have milk. milk. Okay, yeah. thank God. You didn't bring the Pepto Bismol. So, so a little of introduction that. <laughs> so the sauces have have really interesting names. This one is Toxic Avenger. Of course. This one's uh, Red Alert. And this one's a mic drop. We don't know why. So well. I'll uh, Rebecca, by the way, is, is not eating because of the... Uh, it's not because I'm a woods. I really can't. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's true. So there you go. So what? <laughs> that's not fair. You, you got to dab, man. What the hell? Okay, you're going oh, to live. Oh, no, hold yeah. up. All right. <laughs> there you go. First one. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, I, I don't actually drink milk, so this is just going to be more difficult. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah, well, you can you can you can put an extra layer of you can, oh, I'll chase yeah, it with some other hot sauce. Yeah, that would be <laughs> yeah. Just put it on, kill on, one put hot it on sauce the other with one. another right. one. Yeah. yeah, put it put it on the on, on the on the other on the other on the dumpling. <laughs> Dear yeah. Lord. Nice. There you go, Vlad. Oh God. Uh, so the question is, how do you prepare to to the to the to your event? I mean, how do you research on companies? How do you manage multiple calendars? Like all the bits of and pieces of information that you need to collect before you actually go to an event and make it work. So which one of these is which? So uh, the screen one is? It's in the, the order I, I put it is, oh, is I with, with the spiciness, you know? So the yeah. green one should be. Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> so the green what one, what's it called? Where do we start? Uh, Toxic Avenger. Toxic Avenger. So, Toxic so you want to you bite off the first one? Should we do Toxic Avenger first? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Do I have to eat the whole, I should eat the whole thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can that, then there's more, like, if I eat the whole thing, there's more, there's more dumpling to hot sauce ratio. <laughs> right. Do it as however you want. You can take it back. Okay. It's fine. If you want to be a wuss, you can be a wuss. How can we be a wuss? This is being, this is being so recorded. Well, this is great. I just looked up everyone like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're all enjoying this so much. Cheers. <laughs> okay. That's, so quite, that's quite a big mouthful. Come so on. Come on. No, no. I just should I t do it simultaneously. Yeah, no, it's, I it's, need it's to do fine. it before the He's answer. He's fine. He's not getting red at all. It's, it's answer. answer, yeah. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> Found it off so without you shouting. I'm going I'm to I'm gonna eat mine now so I can process the answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Dear. That's uh, that's not that's not that's not hot. Oh, I'm not going to count my chickens yet, but well, that's not too bad. <laughs> okay. So how how do you prepare them? <sighs> For what? <laughs> How do I prepare for conference? Yeah. Well, um, I, I, um, <laughs> I take a, I take a good look at, go I look at the attendees, see who's going, see who, um, who I should, who I just want to catch up with. If it's someone that I've met already, um, and and uh, often, you know, if it's someone I'll know well. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll message them and just be like, oh, let's let's meet up when you're there, and then I'll do some research <coughs> about some people that I want to meet. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and who I who I sort of in a, in a way I'm kind of targeting and who I want to go to. And again, you know, maybe maybe an advance message. If not, sometimes that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, and with me being a a, a, a biz devy PRE type, sometimes you do have to <coughs> chase people a little bit. Um, you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe we can have another one so that Vlad answers at the you know at the second one while. I'm just sitting and playing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> fine. When when the, when the guys have their third one, <laughs> you can have. Stop you taking pictures, please. Your answer. <laughs> You're yeah. not helping, man. Okay, mm. come on. Okay, um, so bottoms up. Quick, quick thing, guys. Just just for the audio and the audience and the and the the YouTube video. Do you, do you There's a mute button on the mic, <laughs> <laughs> so just just hold it in your hand, so we don't have to c destroy everyone's ears. <laughs> so I'm just gonna turn off the mic every time I'm in. If okay, <laughs> trouble. So just just take your mics and put them. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> so how do you prepare? Okay, so now it's unmuted. So, how do I prepare? There was a time when I was young <laughs> that that I would research the speakers and the attendees. Now, this was a time before we had these fancy pantsy meeting apps. So you kind of like really easily like have two screens in front of you and 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 have one open with the speaker list and one open with LinkedIn so you could actually do research. But <sighs> <laughs> I highly recommend it if you have specific goals to so make sure that you have your top 10 lined up. And you don't do this a week beforehand. You don't do this two weeks beforehand. You do this the moment you can, especially since I assume that not everyone goes to an event every week like I do. Um, so if there, th I would say there's a simple equation. The higher the stakes for you to get results from an event, the more, the earlier you want to prepare and um, the more you want to spend time doing this. And 
really know not just what people do, and what, but also where they come from. Like, do you have friends in common with them? Can you get an introduction? Or can you even, here's the rule, can you even have a Skype call before the event? So you can actually kind of like bump the formalities. Because let's remember one thing, especially at these kind of events where the, there's five parties the day before the conference starts, you're going to end up with the most far away people being jet lagged still or already having lost their voice and you only have 15 minutes with them because they're busy the first 10 minutes they're most likely still arriving to the meeting and the last 10 minutes they're already worried about the more important meeting that they have after you um, so do prepare I've stopped preparing I, I usually I have four meetings confirmed through the meeting app now I did look through the meeting app I did mark my favorites I will most likely only talk to a handful of them but I'm also at a stage right now that I'm very fortunate about, that I kind of have the same thing as um, what Rebecca mentioned, is you, you, you just, by proxy, standing next to people who are well-connected, will meet awesome people in the process, and it snowballs like that. And so I try to do my best to spend 20% of my time at conferences nowadays for my needs, for the need... Uh, <laughs> for the needs of my clients. And then I spent the other 80% for the people I care about and my friends because they are effectively going to be the extension of me at an event if I don't manage to catch someone. So the simple question I always ask people is, what are you looking for? What do you have to offer? And based on that, I can then say, well, talk to this guy, talk to that guy, talk to anybody. So well, we'll get into that later. Um, but that's effectively, I would say, the best advice I have. Yep. So, Rebecca, uh, do you want to encourage your friends to have the last one while you give your answer? Yeah, please. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, you, you, you right. okay, let's do it. Well, I can see you're really hungry. <laughs> uh, she was quite hungry. <laughs> this, is, this has ruined the experience of food, though. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the second one called again? The second the one is Red Alert. The yeah. last one is Mic Drop. And, um, I'm on Mic Drop now. I mean, if... if, if I'm on Red Alert. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay, let's do bon it. Appetit. So, Rebecca? Yeah, for me, it's uh, pretty much the same as Vlad. So I do a lot of research. I go to the website and then check out the attendees and I try to make a meeting schedule. If I don't know what they're doing exactly, I Google it. He didn't, okay. he didn't take a bike yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's just... I'm, just, I'm warming up. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, um, let's go, let's go. Uh, what yeah, I actually, I Google that and gather information because you, when you go into a meeting, you really want to know who you're talking to. It's not a nice style to just go into a meeting and then tell the other one, well, so what is it you're actually doing? Especially if you're coming from the service provider side. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I, always, uh, I book a lot of meetings, um, but I'm trying to keep, uh, keep some slots for just walking around the venue because you can never meet all the, peating, uh, all the people that you want to meet during a meeting. And uh, walking around the venue, you're just going to bump into your friends who are standing with the next person that, is, uh, that might be interesting for you as well. And especially after, I think, the <laughs> fourth <laughs> meeting in a row when you're just constantly talking, you need a break. Then the pitch is getting kind of, you know, boring. <laughs> and just give yourself some time and sit down, talk to your friends, and then start over again. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like my job? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, the other ones weren't that bad. That's awful. I'm sorry, I was cool. He, he put Please a, don't he, take this down, YouTube. He put <laughs> a light, he, they put a light one in the middle, so I'm fine now. Oh, man, the mic drops. Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm right behind you. I'm right behind okay. you. Okay. So oh, that's like, that painful in my mouth. <laughs> I wanted to prepare you for the next question, actually. So the, the, the next <sighs> one is... Um, I think it's it's fairly obvious to everybody that there are like two shifts at every conference, like the day shift and the night shift. Um, how would you compare these two? And <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like I'm not listening to anything you're saying. <laughs> no, sorry, day uh, yeah. shift and night shift. Yeah, which one is more important if, 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 if you can actually make this kind of gradation? I think they're both equally important for very different reasons in that the day shift is, uh, is great to meet the new contacts um, and uh, uh, not that you can't meet <laughs> <laughs> new contacts in the night shift. <laughs> it's just horrible, that one. Um, <coughs> night shift is great for, 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 for drinking and like continuing, 
connections that you've already had um, and enjoying yourself. And through that, yes, you will often meet um, the right people. But it, it depends on the level of professionalism that you're going in there with and what you're pitching and how you're pitching it. Both are vital. <laughs> Rebecca, how do you um, find them? Yeah. For me, the, the day shift is obviously it's really important to schedule a meeting with someone that you've never met before and might be valuable for you. Um, but the night shift is actually the one where you connect with the people on a personal level. And That's yeah. a much better way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> this is, uh, and it's, you know, it's funny, it's not about alcohol or getting drunk or something, but in China they actually do that in a business. Uh, I lived in China for quite some time. They do it. If they want to do business, they all go to a restaurant. They get hammered. Gambe. And Yeah, gambe. And uh, when they trust each other on that kind of level, because when you're drunk, you're honest, <laughs> <coughs> then uh, it's a complete different way of working together. And that's exactly what I, th the same feeling that I have going to an evening event. When I meet someone and we had a beer together, it's just a lot easier to, uh, to stay in touch and connect with that person. And he's definitely going to be more willing to help you out with other contacts as well. Um, I'm, 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 I'm wondering why Rebecca is well much better versed in her like English, you know, it's your mother tongue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my, 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 I don't have a tongue right now, but <laughs> <laughs> it burned away in the fiery magma. <laughs> Glad. Uh, so what's your take on the day shift versus graveyard shift? You owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I just I just don't want to waste people's time, man. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh, the rule. <coughs> what was the question again? <laughs> night, oh, daytime, nighttime. All right. So, one really important rule, including these talks, is like, I just want to. Oh my God. I just want to walk. I just want to make sure that you guys walk. Like, that anybody who I have a meeting with walks away. Walks away feeling like. Uh, like their time wasn't wasted in the meeting. So that's rule number one. I'm pretty sure. Daytime versus nighttime, there's one very simple difference, and that's nighttime, it's dark. <laughs> so, so what that means is, what that means is it's harder for people to be spotted by you, and for you to be spotted by them, unless you have like fancy pantsy, like, Outfits like my client robot gentleman or <laughs> bright colored sports t-shirts <laughs> sports jerseys um, and so as a result you can you can m use the mute button if you want um, but as a result during the daytime it's quality quantity and during the nighttime it's quantity quality <laughs> so daytime quantity nighttime quality why because you'll quickly have a realization of who you want to deepen your conversation and relationship with based on those 30 minutes that you have, which are, like I said, effectively 10 minutes, like Rebecca also mentioned. Just to backtrack real quick, <coughs> there's a game company that, that shall be a name that I worked with and I helped with PR work that once went to GDC for the first time, and they were able to afford to send four people, which is great because you can split up the responsibilities. So we got a hold of the press list, which is not easy. Usually the exhibitors get a press list, so we got it through two degrees of separation. And I effectively mapped out the portrait pictures of every single member of the press with their name, their, f their first name, last name, and outlet, and made it into a folder and pretty much gave these people homework to recognize these people and then try to approach them if they met them at GDC, because GDC is freaking expensive. It's around, you know, if you pay full price and you want to actually have a quality hotel, you're, you're going to end up, and that's a question for later, uh, paying at least 2000 to $3,000 just to be there, and then add to it that you want to eat. So you might end up having some expensive dinners, plus they, you know, charge, they ask, they expect you to tip, which is, I'm Mr. Pink from Reservoir Dogs, I... <coughs> I'm not a big fan of tipping, unless I really like the food, and I really like the service, and I don't like the fact that I have to do that everywhere. But that's just me. I understand why minimum wages and all that stuff. Um, so in summary, really try to spot the people during the day, 
shake their hands, make sure that they know who you are, and then in the evening, like Rebecca already mentioned and will also mention, or attempted to mention, um, it really focus on like the people. Like one example I have about spending quality time with someone is actually I love this conference center because well you can c you can consider me lucky. I actually have it with me right now, but you can consider me lucky. But I every time I come to this conference and I walk around, I always find four leaf four leaf clovers. <coughs> so I've got about twenty here um, that I found just now because I, I I took fifteen minutes with a good friend of mine to go hunt for them. Now, you might blame Chernobyl, because <coughs> I tend to find more the closer I get to the Ukraine. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those moments that, that, that is special. And so it's, it's nice when you meet people and you actually can afford to have a special moment like that, because it's a very rare occasion for us to actually be able to hang out outside of a conference. But it's those kind of bonds that, that will last forever, despite what you do. Right? <coughs> so that's my answer. Awesome. Uh, I can see you're on fire right now. Uh, let's do a little of the role-playing you mentioned. So mm. imagine you have a totally new person, and it's its, it's, it's first conference, right? And uh, what would be your take on, let's pick somebody, that guy, the one in the in 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 uh, red jacket. Red jacket, red what, jacket guy. Who are you, what do you do? And what do you have to offer at the conference? Yeah, what are you looking for, what do you have to yeah. offer? You'll see Vlad impersonating you. So this gentleman just came into nowhere. What's your background, sir? So he's a producer. All right. So you effectively uh, managed to escape the, the office because usually it's not producers who are allowed to come to these events. <coughs> so good on you. Um, you know, you might be somewhere in your career where, you know, you've, you're working on a title, um, maybe a title that's two or three years into production, right? Of course, you don't want it to fail because suddenly you have this three years of your time on a project that might not be released. We, that's the worst. Um, you're in a very good position because you're, you're most likely going to bump into uh, like-minded people who are maybe in the same position as you. And that will, of course, allow you to expand your network beyond your company. You're most likely not traveling as much as I am. You're not going to an event very often. So that makes the events even more important for you. Right? I'm guessing you want to meet people that have been through the same thing as you have or are going through. So you'll most likely end up talking about your experiences, you know, your work experiences, trying to see if, you know, the culture that your company has is uh, equal to or worse or better than other company cultures. You either are going to leave wanting to join a different company or, or appreciating your company even more, which is also, of course, a good result. But these relationships, as, as we are already all mentioned, they're going to last you for a while. And you might be a producer right now, and in two or three years from now, um, we'll be most likely here having a beer, and you're maybe the CEO of a very big company. Or I might be, hopefully. Um, and, but, <coughs> and so, but we grow together. We grow together. And, and that means that, effectively, anybody in this room can not just be your best friend, but might be a, a future business partner. right? So. Tailor it to your ambitions. If your ambitions are to potentially one day set up a company yourself, you want to make sure that you find the people that um, you might want to surround yourself with at that point, right? But one quick tip, and that's, you know, I'm not sure who you guys are sitting next to. Most likely, if you brought a friend, you're sitting next to a friend. But if that's not the case, I always say, please make sure to say hi to the person, to introduce yourself to the person on your left and to your right. So please take a moment all and just do that real quick, because that might just be a person you might either give money to, get money from, or, or, or work with in, in, in a year from now. So, hi. you know, never underestimate give the person money. sitting next to you either, <laughs> right? I sat, I, I sat next to uh, the wife of... Um, who, who knows oh, what they're, the they're actually doing it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everyone's no, everyone's actually doing I, it. They, they, they had a moment of doubt, and then they did it. So yeah, no, no. Yeah. It's, it's, everyone's very confident. I'm now. sorry. My, 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 my spirit is slowly floating above my body right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have anybody who's, who's actually at their first conference here? Yeah, who's, 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 who's first conference Hi. is this? Oh, so you're, you, ah. you know your stuff then. But any first-timers, like yeah, any first-timers? First Nobody. Oh, oh, okay. Hey. 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 Okay, what's your name? Uh, Bartosz. Uh, what do you do? Uh, 
So freelance 2D, 3D concept artist. Okay. Welcome to the party, Bartosz. Yeah. Do you want yes. some milk? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what would be your advice to, to Bartosz since he came here and he wants to make his time worthwhile? Will, you look like you want to say some things. Attempt to say something? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, I, I imagine you've probably identified a few people that you want to talk to. Um, is this, if, and if you're freelance, you're, you're probably looking to, to get more clients, right? Um, I, I would have thought. I would have hoped. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, like, what's up with that? Um, so uh, uh, I, I, think, I, think, I think the advice probably extends to the same level of, of advice as to whatever you're looking for. You know, there's the obvious thing of, of identifying the targets that you want to go for um, and, and pursuing those. But then also beyond that, like go to every, every event that you possibly can. There's so much stuff that happens around all of these things. In GDC, it gets like ludicrous. There's 18 parties a night. Um, and, and of course, there it gives you the ability to, to tailor the ones that are going to cater to your needs. You know, the right people are going to be in some rooms. Um, but here, it's kind of cool that there's, there's a couple of different parties every night. And they're all quite well timed so that you can just go from one to the other and get progressively more drunk, but, <laughs> but, uh, but everyone else is too, so that's cool. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've definitely found that you can get into a big crowded party room, and especially if you've, if you've turned up on your own, yeah. um, and you can just be like, oh, okay, do, it, do I know anyone here? I might do, but there's, you know, there's 800 people here, and I, I don't know how to handle that. Um, and I think, I think it it's becomes easier to do that once you take an initial step. My, my thing was always just kind of sidling up to someone else who has the same look of panic on their faces, <laughs> because there always is. There's always someone doing the phone, just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like and, and you're probably doing that themselves. And the number of times I've sat there kind of going, OK, well, how am I going to work this one out? And then, and then you're both like, <laughs> oh, oh hey. hey, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> are, are, are you texting uh, to me right now? Yeah, and uh, yes, that's that's. Please help. help. <laughs> um, uh, and then and then you can kind of kick off from there. And then and then as we've all pointed out as well, you know, you you might well that that person might do something completely different to what you do, but they also might know someone of of the you know who's really looking for uh, a three D a freelance three D concept artist. And then they'll be like, hey, you should meet. Lukash, <laughs> no, you know, whatever. I'm impressed with your knowledge about Polish names. Yes, Bartosz. <laughs> <laughs> Michal. <Yeah. laughs> about finding people, actually, how do you find relevant people? Uh, how do you find the contacts that you assume will be like the the, the best ones that you actually want to meet, Rebecca? Well, I don't think that I that I find that out at in advance and just go in there and then I talk to a bunch of people and then I realize, okay, wow, this is that guy. And sometimes it just happens uh, on by accident or it's a lucky coincidence, you know. Um, but if it's people that I would actually want to work with, of, of course, I would look them up up front and then maybe send them a LinkedIn uh, request or something. You know, Facebook is for friends and also, but I use it for business as, as well. But I would first, you know, add someone on LinkedIn and then start a conversation. And I think some people as well, you can, you can approach at the event and yeah. some people you can't. Like, it depends on the event, right? Like, at E3, it's very difficult to just walk up to a booth and be like, hi, and, you know, introduce yourself. Then they'll all be like, no. <laughs> um, uh, whereas in, in a more open format and in a more mixed up format like here, um, uh, or, or the other uh, arguably slightly smaller ones, I think it's easier, isn't it? To, yeah, definitely. To, like do the cold approach if yeah. you like, I mean, like seeing someone that you want to be on board with yeah, and you see E3 it's just insanely mm. big and it's going to be so hard to find the person that you really want to talk to you're just like it gets so overwhelming that you're just running from one party to the next but you yeah. know there's a good person not only a good person business wise but there's mm. people that you actually want to meet and there's people at this party and it's getting it's getting really really confusing and stressful yeah, so I think this is something that you have to figure it out for yourself don't panic with it you know and don't try to do it all you will meet the other people at another event, that's for sure. Yeah. But focus <laughs> on that one thing and don't just rush in, say hi, and run away. That's and, not fun. And, and, and did you ever meet like a very like important contact or like that turned out to be really important in a really unusual situation, like either totally awkward or like the most like um, that couldn't be foreseen? Many. I would have to think about it. Oh, I can tell. please share, <laughs> share some dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt. The most awkward situation when you, when you met a valuable contact. 
Well, bumping into each other in the toilet is not that awkward anymore because it happens all the time. Uh, it's like the benefit wow. oh, okay. and the downfall need, of your rhinos. I need, I need to think, <laughs> I need to think about that one more. But it, it'll, it'll show, it'll come <laughs> up. Um, okay. I would say just to backtrack a little on on what on what Rebecca and Will already said. Um, just a, qu a few quick practical tips. One of the things that I often do, or why? Well, let me rephrase that. God. Teach yourself to badge spot. Now, you might have noticed. Some of you might have noticed I was walking around with my badge as a bib because I want, you know, to make sure that my name is here and I don't have to do this. So, you, badge design for a conference for me is like become like a, a craft. So it's like, you know, in, at, at an event in Finland in Slush, the, the badges are this big, right? And you can clearly see if someone's an investor, if someone's a startup, and so forth. So badge spotting, like teach yourself peripheral vision. Ladies are better at that. At the same time, be careful with the ladies. You know, eyes are up here <laughs> and everything. Be respectful. Um, but badge spot. And then the second thing is find the traffic points in an event where you know a lot of people are going to pass by, uh, which in this case are the stairs. Right? So hang out there. You'll see the people come up. You'll be able to recognize them, spot them, and then maybe engage in a conversation. You guys already mentioned it. Um, people who are usually looking at their phone uh, might be busy, but at the same time, if you have a meeting, in an, a, a specific meeting spot, like in this case, the, the business area there, some of you can get in, some of you cannot. You might have noticed a lot of people stay at the entrance to meet with their uh, meeting. I cannibalize other people's meetings if, if, if they have someone who's too late. So I just approach them. If there's someone I want to talk to or haven't had a chance to, I'm like, excuse me, like, are you waiting for a meeting? Yes. Has he shown up yet? No. Well, allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> because they're there anyways. And up until that person shows up, they have nothing else to do except wonder when that person is showing up. And that's become a very effective tactic because guess what? And the person who they actually have the meeting with shows up, you also get to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, oh, hi, I'm just keeping this guy warm for you. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I believe your table's over there. Um, and so uh, the final thing I want to bring to, to, uh, to your attention is that is what I mentioned earlier, which is also helping other people. And so there's a simple approach to being at a lot of events, which is you speak there, you volunteer there, or you have the money and the, the, the ability to exhibit there, either for free or by paid. But in every single case, you have the ability to help. I'm a speaker, I'm here to serve. The organizers paid me to be here. They've maybe provided me with a hotel or even maybe covered my flight if, if, if they have the funding for that. I'm here to serve. As a volunteer, you have the ability to approach anybody, regardless of their status and importance, and be like, excuse me, is there anything I can help you with? And they might remember you five years from then when most likely you're their boss or, you're, or they're your boss. So. But never shy away from the opportunity to say hi to someone. Just make sure that you're careful and considerate about it. Uh, it, it's, it popped up a, a couple of times already, so I'd like to address this elef elephant in the room. Most, I would say most of the people that go to the conferences are traveling on a limited budget, sometimes a very limited budget, like one digit. Uh, so I, I, I would like to, I would like you to give your your tips on on how actually how how to optimize your cost on these events. I mean, GDC is obviously like the most expensive thing ever, but but you don't need to go there like instantly. But whenever you're traveling to your regular events, like either local or like within your continent, do you have any like tactics on on how not to spend insane amount of money on on nonsense? And I'm not talking the nightlife. Uh, Will? I was going to talk about the nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. um, uh, there's, there's I, I mean, it, it, I, I guess it's similar to, to just many aspects of life, really, which is separating it down to what you're, where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, um, and, and how you're going to effectively socialize. Uh, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of free stuff at conferences. There's a lot of places where you can get free bites of food to, to eat. Um, and and get free beers. There's so much beer that spills around these places. Um, <laughs> lollipops and lollipops. Sure. I mean, look at all the food here. <laughs> um, uh, 
and, and a lot of those events are not, uh, you don't need to pay for. Um, and, and, and I think, I, I think also there's, I, again, this extends to sort of life as well, but there's, there's, it's very easy to just like call Ubers everywhere when you really don't need to. You could absolutely take public transport um, or, or just walk. Like the, a lot of GDC is, is, I find, often slightly too Uber friendly. It's like, man, you can just walk three blocks and then you've saved yourself a bunch of money. Um, and time, right? Because you've got to wait for it. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going with a colleague as well or, or, or someone that's in a similar situation and you can share a room. I don't know. I mean, this is... Yeah, share the resources, It's just right? very practical, you know, I, I guess. Yeah. You know, share, share a room. Get a twin room and you're halving the cost and, and you can be just as comfortable. Um, but getting your own room... Uh, I'm just wondering if those guys are here because they heard there's going to be a free pirogi in the panel. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Will is known for his uh, love to pirogi. On that, on that, on that the are there, are there more pierogi? Because I'm not just thinking about right now, but, but this is definitely going to have an influence on me later tonight. So I, I like there's a reason I'm drinking bottle. Can I please have some more pierogi, please? <laughs> I mean, just to kind of like thin everything out that's right now killing my uh, stomach. Can, can, we, can we have more pierogi? It's like I might have internal bleeding. Yeah. Later tonight. Uh, just with no hot sauce. No, no I've sauce. I've <laughs> God, <laughs> I beg you, no sauce. Uh, what, what else have you got? Yeah, in, uh, so in the meantime, Vlad, uh, since you're uh, like a serial traveler, do you have any tips that Will didn't cover yet? Yes. So <coughs> just to give you some statistics, um, so because I, 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 I like to track my, my numbers. So I've the, the, the peak travel expenditure that I've had uh, in cer certain years was between 15,000 to 20,000 euros. And by travel, I mean hotel flights, taxis, Ubers, everything that puts me in a certain vehicle or in the air. Um, not everyone can afford that. That might actually be twice the yearly salary of some people. Um, but um, really teaming up is important. So GDC has been covered. I believe everyone who has not been to GDC. Okay, Let me help you guys. So GDC is a good example. There's a hostel, downtown indie hostel. Now, of course, this is going to screw me over because now more people are going to book it. But um, you book ahead, and you can effectively, for I believe $50 a night, stay there in a four-bed room, preferably one with a bathroom because they also have co ones without bathrooms inside, and then you have a common bathroom. So make sure you have friends that you team up with for a booking. And then um, you effectively are at the cheapest place. Now, take a step back. If you can make friends in San Francisco, that's great. But guess what? Those friends are most likely going to be bombarded by other friends during GDC. So you got to be careful with that. I always bring gifts. I always, I always, um, that, that's something that you get at a stage of development and usually get, you get invited like, oh, you can stay at my place next year. So just make sure that they don't regret it afterwards. Now, in terms of travel, in terms of flight, it's just it's all about booking early. It's really just about booking early. Like, just be early. Don't book a week ahead. You're going you're gonna to waste money. If you want to go to GDC next year, you plan it two months ago, period. You're already technically too late. Not really, but if you want to get the most bang for your buck and not waste money. Now, you already mentioned it. My best example is Gamescom. Gamescom has a business area where every single company has their own booth. And it's very self-sustaining. So uh, aside from bathrooms, everything is there. Water, food, whatnot. So every time I have a meeting at a bigger company, I always politely ask my contact, could I please have some food and drink? Now, the solution I've come up with, which I'm breaking right now for the sake of the audience, so you're welcome, is I fast. So I only eat once a day, which also is not very easy. So, But I usually plan for a dinner. And um, that has helped me personally. Now, I don't advise it. I don't recommend it for everybody, but that's my approach. Um, as for, so, 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 so travel as early as possible, accommodation, try to share it. I've had many friends stay with me when I was a speaker. Um, I've had many friends, uh, here's another thing, so some, sometimes I have the honor of being a VIP, yeah, and um, I get access to food and some people don't. Now, the amount of times I've snuck out food for friends in need, I can't count on hands anymore. But it's really, we're all in this together, really. Yeah. One final word of wisdom from 
each one of you. Uh, think what would you like to share with the audience as in like one brief sentence, but take your phone, take your Google Translate, and say it in Polish. Please. <laughs> okay. I'll be as quick as possible. <laughs> oh, the excitement. I mean, I'm... Yeah. Let's face it, the value of this lies in the comedy of the translation, not what I'm about to say. Pearls of wisdom, don't know about that from me. <laughs> you can stand up if you want. No, I'm not going to. <coughs> uh, okay. I could have done this before, right? I could have done this before, right? I could have done What, what, what does that mean for you? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, because we're on air. Okay. Can I see it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't be a dick. There was another section to that. It wasn't just that. Yeah, that, it's, uh, yeah it's actually, it, it is words of wisdom. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rebecca. Got it, I got it. You look ready. <laughs> Can we have, does anybody speak German? Nie wiedzą, kim chcesz być? Uh, can, can, like can you translate it to English? Okay, translate it would be, you never know who the next person is. Uh, oh, okay. Or will be in the future, so it will be nice. Okay, yeah, so that's Google Translate's I issue. Well, Polish is not like the easiest. Beach. 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 I see Vlad is ready. And he has a blue screen. Ktoś prosi zadzwonić po karetkę? Poważnie, ni żartuje Michal. Co zrobiłeś? Pamiętaj, że nigdy nie jesteś sam na jaki je jakikolwiek konferencję. Can I have a round of applause? 